Hello, Valley Free Family. It's, it's good to be with you again. Today, as I record this, it is, it is Wednesday afternoon, and we're looking ahead to our activities for this, this coming Easter weekend. And as you know, uh, we're beginning our, our Easter weekend celebration with, with our Good Friday service. And our Good Friday service is, is, many people have told me over the years, over the last few years, that Good Friday service is, is a highlight of the year for them. We usually gather in this room, our worship center, and we set the table in the middle of the room and it's, it's beautifully decorated by our team and, and the chairs are set in a, in a, in a round, a circular pattern around the table and the lights are turned down low and, and uh, we take time to have time of devotion, focusing on the cross and what Christ has done for us. And we, we have a time of worship and through music. And then families are encouraged to come to the table when they're ready to take communion together. It's a very thoughtful evening, a wonderful evening to focus on the cross and what Jesus Christ has done for us. It's a time of deep reflection for what Jesus has done for us by paying for our sin, by paying the penalty for our sin. He took our place. He absorbed the judgment of God, of God on our behalf. He who lived a sinless life paid the full price of sin for us. See, Good Friday is a time to reflect on the immensity of the sacrifice of Jesus for us, what he has done for us, the salvation that has been purchased for us by his blood on the cross. So this year is certainly a different context for us. So without the ability to meet together as a church family, it is going to feel entirely different this year. We'll miss the atmosphere of the darkened room here in the worship center. We'll miss the atmosphere of, of being together as brothers and sisters in Christ and the fellowship that comes with it and the, and the, the profound experience we have around the table together. But brothers and sisters, God is at work. None of what we are experiencing today in this new context that we're working in, none of it is outside of God's control. And contrary to popular opinion, the, the church is not closed down, the church is simply dispersed. Someone has said that it, has remarked that it's amazing that, that 2,000 years ago the church began meeting in homes together and, and doing exactly what we're doing together, offering a Seder meal and the Lord's Supper together, but they did it in homes. And now 2,000 years later, we're in homes again, celebrating as families. So you see, I'm, I'm looking forward to our time together, albeit in separate homes. I, I believe this may be one of our most significant Good Friday services that we've enjoyed. So as you know, the Last Supper is a New Testament version of the Passover meal, the, the Jewish Seder meal. The Feast of Passover is a celebration of God's redemption, God's deliverance of the people of Israel from bondage, from the bondage of slavery in Egypt. So the correlations between the Feast of Passover that they celebrated so many thousands of years ago and, 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 the, and the Lord's Supper, well, it's just amazing how the two correlate together. So this Friday evening, we're going to take a deeper look at the Passover meal and how it is celebrated. We won't do a complete Seder meal, but we'll look at how it's celebrated and we'll look at, by comparison, the significance of what happened in the upper room that evening with Jesus Christ and his disciples. Our focus is going to be on the, on the five cups of the meal. Some, there's some differentiation, some differences as far as whether it was four cups or five cups, and we're gonna use the five cup model for us. And each one of the cups of wine has a special significance for the Seder meal, for the Passover meal. And these are, these are probably the same cups that Jesus used during their Seder meal together on that last evening. We're going to look at the significance of each of the cups. You see, I believe we have a, a unique opportunity this year to drive these truths deep into our hearts and to do it in the context of our homes and our families. So I encourage you not only to participate on Friday evening, but I encourage you to take time to prepare. Prepare to meet the Lord at his table, at his invitation. This is an extremely significant moment and I, I, I pray that you take the time to do it. So today I thought I'd take, as we set up our table here in the worship center, 
I thought I would take a few minutes to help you think through how you can prepare for Friday night, how you can be, uh, be ready to participate with the Lord's Supper. So on the practical side of these preparations, it's important to prepare the physical space. If you remember, Jesus sent the disciples on ahead to prepare the room where they would have the meal that evening. We need to do the same. So the first thing I suggest is wherever you're going to watch the presentation on, free, on Friday night, that you clear off the coffee table or, or clear off the kitchen table or, or wherever you're going to be watching, clear off a table, prepare a table where you can put out the elements. Make a separate place that's dedicated to communion. Put a nice tablecloth on it, uh, possibly some, some candles on the table. I'm encouraging you to dedicate this space and mark it for God's presence that evening. And yes, it's okay to call it a holy place. And then the next practical thing that we can do is set up the elements of the communion, the, the bread and the cup. Now the Jewish meal would have been wine with unleavened bread. So you might use wine, you might use grape juice, you might use whatever. If you can't get to the grocery store this week, if you just can't get out, then just use whatever you have on hand. Water and bread will be suitable for this occasion. And then I encourage you to have all your preparations done early. Have the table laid out early so that you are coming to the table. I, I would hate for you to be scrambling at the last minute when, when we go through the cups of the Seder meal and we explain the significance of each, we come to the end and we, and we, and we turn it over to Megan for worship that night and you're not ready. Have the bread out. Have whatever you're, you're, you're taking for the bread, the, the wine, or the, or the drink, whatever you're using, have it ready here so you're not scrambling in that moment to find the elements. I encourage you to take away the logistics of the meal so that you can participate fully, so you can be fully engaged in what we're doing. And then I would ask you to take some steps to prepare your hearts and your minds for the table, to come to the table. Remember, this is a very sober and contemplative event. It's true that it's preceded by a meal, it's preceded by fellowship, it's, it was originally done in homes, and even that night of the Exodus, it was done in homes with a family. But remember this, the suffering of the cross, the, the suffering of our Savior on the cross, and, and, and what he endured on our behalf that those hours, is always in the background. See, Jesus shared this time, and Jesus shared these eternal truths just prior to going to the horror of the cross. So this Good Friday, we're gathered together to consider the depth of that sacrifice. So I encourage you to take time to read before we come to the table. We are going to be focusing on Exodus chapter 6, the preparation for the Exodus. Specifically, we'll be looking at verses 6 and 7, but I encourage you to read the whole chapter of Exodus 6. And then going to the New Testament, you can read the story of the, of the Last Supper in Matthew 26, verses 1 through 30. And then I encourage you to read from 1 Corinthians as Paul gives instructions for, for the church to come to the table. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 17 to 34. Read those over so that you are, you are in the context of the Last Supper. And then I encourage you to take time to pray beforehand. Thank God for the privilege of the invitation to come to his table. And ask the Holy Spirit to prepare your heart so that you can hear his voice, follow his leading, and experience the presence of the Lord at the table. And remember this, that, that Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 warns us to be responsible in the way that we take communion. He warns us against taking the cup, taking communion, taking this last supper, taking it in an unworthy manner, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 11. What does it mean? We, all, we here at Valley Free Church understand scriptures to mean First of all, you need to be in a relationship with Jesus Christ. This table is only for believers, those who have placed their lives 
under the sovereignty of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you haven't done that, then now is the time to do that. I believe now more than ever is the time to do that. Whatever reason you have for, for hesitating on that decision in your life, now is the time to get past it. Now is the time to give your life to Jesus Christ. And to do that, we ask you, the scriptures ask you to confess your sins, recognize that you are a sinner caught in sin and in desperate need of a Savior. And then recognize Jesus as that Savior. He is, as John the Baptist said, the Lamb of God who has come to take away the sin of the world. Recognize Jesus as your Savior. And then give your life over to him. Say, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you to live your new life and to go where you lead me to go. Dedicate your life to Jesus Christ. First thing you need to do to come to the table is to give your life to Jesus Christ. And the second thing that goes with the, taking it in a worthy manner is Paul reminds us that we need to examine our heart before we come to the table. So take time to pray. Take time to ask the Holy Spirit to come and shine his, his perfect, holy, eternal light in the depths of your heart and see if there's any way that doesn't belong to the Lord. And as the Holy Spirit surfaces those things, confess those sins that you may be, may be walking in righteousness as you come to the table. Come to the table with an examined heart. And then as you serve communion tomorrow on Friday evening, as you serve the communion, I would encourage you to recite the instructions that Paul gave us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, specifically verses 23 to 26. Use that as a script as you serve. And then I was thinking about the families in our church, families who will be coming to the table if you have younger children, this is a perfect time to instruct them on what communion means. It may, be all, it may also be a, a wonderful time to lead your child to Christ if they've never made that decision. I can only imagine the significance that this time could be in your family. And given the seriousness of communion, I urge you to prepare your children for the event. Our children's education director, Mary Lou, has sent out an instructional video that you can use to teach your children about communion. Please review that, that video that Mary Lou sent to your family prior to tomorrow night. And then I would remind you, this is my little secret, you don't have to be a pastor to serve communion. You don't have to be an elder. You don't have to hold a theology degree or have a Master's of Divinity degree to serve communion. In this instance, when we are gathered together as a church in our homes, in our families, I encourage the spiritual leader of each home to take the lead, to take on the role of spiritual leader and act as a priest for your family this evening. It's a wonderful opportunity to model a godly household as you pray together, as you worship together, as you seek the Lord together around the table. It's a wonderful opportunity to model godliness and godly leadership. So as the Lord gathered his disciples for the Last Supper that evening, he told them that he had anticipated spending that time with them. He longed to share the significance of that Passover meal with them, and I wonder if he didn't share the significance of these cups as well. He joined in a tradition at that time was over 3,000 years old. But that night was different. That was the night when Jesus came with his disciples that he would fulfill the Passover. He would indeed be the perfect Lamb of God who would come to take away the sins of the world. Everything that the Passover meal points forward to points to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He would fulfill his role of taking away the sins of the world. So brothers and sisters, I can't wait to celebrate this time with you. And I pray it's a very special time for you and your family. But more importantly, more importantly, the Lord Jesus Christ himself
can't wait to come to the table with you and to meet you at the table. He told us that we need to come to the table at his invitation and do it often in remembrance of him. May the Lord, Lord may the Lord's presence fill your home this week as we start with Friday evening celebrating what he did for us on the cross and then as we move towards Easter we celebrate the resurrection power of Jesus. May the Lord bless you.